Hey guys, it's TJ. Welcome back to New Zealand Mysteries. Um, we're going to have a look at some information about the missing people of Piha Beach, which I know is quite exciting for me anyway, because I've always thought that something's going on there. And I reckon the people have been abducted or something because so many people, six people now, have uh, gone missing from there. So let's have a look. stuff.co.nz is what we're looking at and there is an article or a story the missing people of Piha 25 years six cases no answers and this is by Jackson Thomas and Ryan Anderson and quickly before we uh, get into that we're just going to look at Piha and Wikipedia so Piha is a coastal settlement on the western coast of the Auckland region in New Zealand. It is one of the most popular beaches in the area and a major day trip destination for Aucklanders throughout the year and especially in summer. Piha is 39 kilometres west of Auckland city centre on the Tasman Sea coast to the north of the Manukau Harbour on the western edge of the Waitakere Ranges. Immediately to the north of Piha is Whites Beach and immediately to the south is Mercer Bay. Land access to both is only by foot. The nearest beaches accessible by road are Karikiri to the south and Afata to the north. As well as two surf beaches, there are also a sheltered lagoon and several streams in the area. The coastline and forested Waitakere ranges offer a number of walks or tramps ranging from easy to very difficult Due to the spread of the incurable cowrie dieback disease, large parts of the Waitakere dangers were closed from 2018 until further notice. Peace Heart is a well-known black sand beach due to the high iron content, which is of volcanic origin. And some really nice pictures of lion rock. Hopefully that comes into frame. Beautiful. We can't say that um, it's not a beautiful place. And if you're wondering where it's situated, this is it here. Now, let's get on with this story. That's just a snippet of a video that it starts with, but I'll have the de, the links in the description box below so you can go ahead and look at it yourself. Uh, underneath saying, since 1992, six people have gone missing from a small area around Piha without a trace. Those affected are calling for answers. And I know a lot of true crime uh, fellow enthusiasts are calling for answers as well and have been for a long time. Drowning, suicide and tragic accidents, all explanations given for the disappearances of six young people who vanished from the same small corner of Auckland's west coast, but not everyone is so convinced, Jackson Thomas reports. On March the 7th, 2020, French teen Eloy Ryland went missing near Piha Beach. He became the sixth person since 1992 to have disappeared from the same small corner of West Auckland without a trace. Each of them, attractive, lively and young, have never been found. Coroner's findings and police investigations have come up with different explanations, all involving the wild sea. It is a logical explanation when someone vanishes in this part of the world, but not everyone is buying it. So there's another uh, bit of a movie fair and here, and I'm not sure if I get a copyright strike for actually playing them, so that's why I'm not going to. But of course I'm going to have a link from the description box below so you can come straight to this article and have a look for yourself. Piha is a popular summer destination. It's one of the country's most famous beaches and home to a small community flanked by dense native bush. It's isolated and people there talk. When someone goes missing, everyone has a theory. Whispers breathe life into rumour as they're passed through the grapevine, exchanged over a beer or shed out in the surf. 
In small communities, the truth can then often get distorted, even lost. But in these cases, there is one constant. The belief among many that someone here knows something. A six-month-long stuff investigation has prompted renewed calls from family and community figures for police to re-examine all the cases with fresh eyes. In isolation, the cases can be explained, but together the eerie similarities have left unanswered questions and a community to wonder, did police get it right? Or could there perhaps be a darker side to this iconic stretch of coast? So we all know um, the name Eloy Rowland. A dishevelled dishevelled and torn missing persons banner for Eloy Rowland still glows in the wind at Tatarangi Roundabout. It's faded now, some nine months on, and hangs at the mouth of Scenic Drive, West Auckland's gateway to the Waitakere Rangers and coastal communities such as Piha. That's where Rowland was heading. Cell phone data puts him in the vicinity of Piha Road and Scenic Drive at 9.18am on the morning of his disappearance on March 7th. After an exhaustive land search spanning more than 1,600 hours, police suspended the physical search for Roland in May, pending new information. No one has since come forward. Detective Senior Sergeant Callum McNeil said there have been no significant updates but police continue to be in regular contact with Roland's family in France. His parents say they have not given up hope. They say it will be very difficult this year as they are a very close family and not being able to see our son physically is going to be hard on all of our family, they said in a statement. And it's I don't know where he went. There was, there was even though we were going into lockdown, there was a lot of searches um, and there was just no sign of him. He just vanished. It's, I don't even know how to explain it. Then we have Lawrence Wu. A year earlier, almost to the day, was the last time anyone saw Lawrence Wu, who was 22. Wu was last seen at about 1.40pm on March the 10th at St Luke's Liquor Centre before his car was found in Piha. His phone was also last used there. The family in February 2019 offered a $200,000 reward for any information that led to their son being found. Ultimately, police called off the search for Wu as well and his case was referred to the coroner. Again, no trace of Wu was ever found. Let's look at Kimbambus and Sharif Vausden, two more young people that went missing. So according to this Article Kim Bambus and Sheree Vowsden, about one kilometre up the Piha Hill at the end of a long and twisting log race road is the Mercer Bay Loop car park. There in 2017 is where Kim Bambus went missing. Five years earlier, Sheree Vowsden vanished from the same area. And this is Kim Bambus. Both their cars were discovered in the car park at the start of the trail. Bambus's keys were in the ignition but Vowsden's left with the windows down and in both cases personal belongings and shopping bags had been inside the vehicles. Documents from a scene examination released to staff under the Official Information Act revealed that in one of the vehicles the passenger seat visor was left down. The vanity mirror had swipe marks on it indicating it had been recently cleaned. It's presumed, in Vowsden's case at least, that the 42-year-old mother accidentally fell from the Mercer Cliffs that tower 240 metres above the wild surf. She was last seen by a group of tourists walking along the track with a bottle of wine in hand. Not unusual, her family said towards the point she would often go to clear her head. The group watched as she disappeared around the corner and that's the last time anyone saw the single mother again. Both Women were known to frequent the loop track, which takes about 20 minutes to complete. Neither made it back to their vehicles. Both lives have been ruled to have been claimed by the unforgiving cliffs of Mercer. Only when standing atop of the cliffs can you truly understand how intimidating and overwhelming a force of nature it is. They are the highest coastal ridges in New Zealand, at points as high as 240 metres above the rough sea below, higher than the sky tower, iconic sky deck. It's a natural fortress and a site where an old Maori pa once stood. 
naturally etched into the cliff face is the unmistakable face of a Maori woman. She was Hanarangi, as the plaque at the top of the cliff explains, in Maori myth, the beautiful only daughter of a local chief. She too vanished. It said, or it was said, a rogue wave one day smashed up onto the cliffs and swept away her lover. After weeks of grieving, looking out across the ocean, she disappeared and the cliff face took her image. Quinton Godwin, in May 1992, Quinton Goodwin left a note at home indicating he was going to Piha to end his life. We've got two spellings of Godwin. We've got sort of Godwin and Goodwin, so I'm not sure which one's right. Um, but he returned home reporting to the driver who ferried him from Piha that he had second thoughts. Five days later, he vanished, never to be seen again. So another link to Piha. And we all have seen these photos of Irena Asher. Um, this was a huge, huge case. Irena Asher, it's nearly um, uh, Asher, sorry, it's nearly impossible to find a local who accepts the coroner's findings in any of Piha's missing persons cases. Irena Asher was one of the country's most high profile vanishings and one that still baffles those who lived through it. Asher is presumed dead, with coroner Peter Ryan finding she accidentally drowned. After an evening of drinking drugs and distressing calls to police, pleading for help in October 2004. And there's a little snippet of a phone call to police. Um, I won't go through it, but you can get to it through the link in the description box if you want to have a look at that. The last two people to see the missing model alive were walking their dog at 1.30am and say they watched her walk naked into the darkness towards the south end of the beach. Like the others, she was never seen again. But this year, new research emerged supporting what many people such as Duncan Clark have been adamant about for over a decade now, that these people never went into the water at all. Clark has been a lifeguard out at Piha for over 30 years. He's more or less seen it all and has dragged multiple bodies out of the unforgiving swells in his time. He says it's never a good day on the job, but at Piha it happens. Bodies, par bodies partially decomposed, scratched or maimed from the rocks, even some that have been picked apart by sharks. Despite exhaustive efforts across multiple police and volunteer agencies, they have never found a trace of Raina Asher, Vasden, Kimbenbis, Lawrence Wu or Elo Rowland. So, so were the police looking in the right places? Well, obviously not. They weren't looking in the right places because they didn't find them. If they were looking in the right places, I'm sure they would have found them. Um, Clark recalls the days and weeks that followed Irena Asher's disappearance as miserable and explains how the conditions that fateful night simply did not lend themselves to her being swept away. The conditions that night were atrocious. On shore, 20 knot winds, possibly some of the worst conditions you could have out there. Clark said it was at least three to four metre swells, all breaking right on the shore. Southwest winds, it was cold, bitterly cold. He said, in my experience, immediately I felt it was more likely that if someone had gone in the water and drowned, they would have been swept back up onto the shore 100%. He said, I was expecting her to be found coastal in the wider Piha area. He said it's not uncommon for a body to go under for three to seven days until the gases start to build up through the decomposition, etc. And then they will float up closer to Bethel's Beach. As Clark and his team continued to scour the coast and days turned to weeks, his heart went out to Irena's family. He said there's a hope for closure then for the family that we can get their daughter or sister back, he said. But when we got past that period you really start to feel for them, and even more so when the rumour mill kicks into overdrive. He continues, it's a funny little community, and a lot of people have a lot of stories about what happened, based on what they want to believe. He says, I personally don't know what happened to her. I can only hope that we did our job to the best of our ability and with search and rescue teams, and that ultimately she didn't go into the water that day. He says, if she had gone in the water, we would have found her. So uh, there's another little thing, um, video from Sir Bob Harvey that you can take a look at 
um, it says Sir Bob Harvey, ha- Harvey has never accepted that people have gone missing without a trace of the cliffs at Mercer Bay Loop. Former Waitakere City Mayor and West Auckland native Sir Bob Harvey has been obsessed with the missing people of Piha for over a decade. He too is convinced Irena never went into the surf that day and fears something far more sinister is afoot in other cases. He says, I never thought she went into the water, not for a second. I just couldn't see her getting out through that uh, surf, firstly. But the more I spoke to people and got the full story of that evening, I was even more convinced that she never went in the water. Harvey believes Irena was cold, distressed and disorientated. She would want to seek warmth from security, not the bitter chill of the South Piha surf. But we all never know what was going through the young lady's mind at the time. I guess. Uh, it never made sense to me. He says the notion that she would or even could wade out into that surf. So then where is Irena Asher? It is a mystery, but I don't believe in people vanishing without a trace. Neither do I. There's got to be traces of them somewhere. Um, a surf line for saver for more than 64 years now along the west coast, Harvey has pulled many bodies from the depths. Um, he says it's never pleasant especially after a few days a week but bodies turn up we find something always he continues to say i have researched this i have thought hard on this and i believe these women these young men and indeed asha were abducted he said and this is along the lines of a lot of people that think the same thing um it says i believe asha to be separate possibly struck by a vehicle even accidentally and disposed of not at piha but in our other cases, they're linked. I absolutely believe that. Um, so if someone goes into the water at Piha, Mercer Bay, and drowns, the overwhelming odds point to them being found at one of three locations, the northernmost end of Piha, Bethel's Beach, or the Kaipara Harbour, within three to ten days. Earlier this year, in a world first research out of University of Auckland, it uh, showed how many drowning victims were recovered and where they would ultimately end up. It says, and found that of the 219 drownings across New Zealand between 2008 and 2017, more than half, which is 58%, of the bodies were recovered within just 24 hours. The majority of those were found at the same location. 7% were found within 1K of where they were reported missing, 13% between 1 to 5K away, and 9% were found more than 5 kilometres away. Only just 9% were never seen again. And at Piha, that number was even lower. Between 2003 to 2020, Piha lifeguards have made more than 1,588 water rescues. There was only one death during that period where a body was not recovered. That's a video from Rachel Vasden, who doesn't accept the coroner's findings and wants the police to reopen the investigation into her sister-in-law's disappearance. So if a person was to jump or fall from Mercer Bay Cliffs, as Chief Coroner Neil McLean ruled, as the cause of death in Valston's case, why was no trace of them found? The coroner came back to the conclusion Valston had, in her presumed intoxicated state, hopped the barrier, walked to the cliff's edge and accidentally fallen to her death. No evidence was found, however, to indicate foul play or involvement of any other person. A broken bottle of wine was the only object of interest found in the search, but it could not be linked to the bottle that Valsden was seen with earlier, the coroner ruled. All the circumstances pointed to Valsden falling and being swept away by the sea. But that's a conclusion rejected by Harvey, Clark and the Valsden family. Her sister-in-law, Rachel Valsden, says, Once is a tragic accident. But when you have this many missing people who not only all look the same, but who have all disappeared in the same area without a trace, no way. There would be trace of them on the cliffs. Nobody is jumping out that far and clearing the rocks. Nobody. 
Just three days before Christmas, Rachel and the rest of the Varsden family were in Whangarei for the holidays when they received the call that Cherie was missing. Rachel stayed with her children while her then-husband, Cherie's brother, returned to Auckland to join the search. As each day went past, it got harder and harder to put on a brave face, she said. She continues to say, The fact that we were finding nothing and everybody was thinking Cherie had gone there to commit suicide, it made my stomach turn because I knew Cherie. She would never leave her daughter. Never. She says, I started thinking along the lines of, somebody knows something. Someone has taken her. The more I have looked into, the more I absolutely believe that. She says, I didn't have the backbone back then to stand up and speak like I do now eight years on. It's no criticism of police at the time because they were searching. But when you compare it to the Irena Asher case or Kim Bambus or even young Elo Rowland, Cherie's was old news pretty quickly. And yeah, it amazes me. I don't know why some stories of missing persons or that are really important and some seem not by the news media. Um, I of course, think every single one is important, but everything sort of dies off pretty quickly. That's why we need to keep them going. Rachel and Cherie had six weeks of, had kids six weeks apart. They were close, and returning to the site of her beloved friend's apparent accident eight years on only further solidified her belief in what really happened that day. She said, what happened to her is not right, it's dodgy. Someone out here has a type, and when you put them, the missing persons cases, all next to each other, it's an exact type. Even Eloy is very similar, bone structure, eyes, etc. She said, the timing in between is what I want investigated. Who was possibly in jail or away during that period of time between the cases? That is a local. She says, the clues might be sitting there, they just haven't been picked up yet. Sheree is not in that water because we would have found her. To this day, Clark sums up Cherie's disappearance in one word, bizarre. Clark has seen plenty of people fall from Lion Rock. He describes the trail of tragedy they leave down the rock face, bits of clothing, cell phone, shoe, blood. To find nothing in both the Cherie and Kim Bambus cases, yeah, bizarre, he says. Harvey is even more steadfast in his position that it's not the water nor the cliffs that hold the answers. He says, come on, these are not the cliffs of Acapulco. Uh, these cliffs slope outwards, he says. They are fiercely cruel for a body falling off the top. If these women did jump or fall, they would not make it any further than 20 to 30 metres down before making an impact. Some kind of a horrible thought, isn't it? Police again did a great job searching in both cases, but found nothing because there was nothing to find. Like our two young men closer towards the beach, like the Arena Asher case, the coroner needs to revisit this. I believe there is a serial killer on the Piha route and he's operating on the loop track and Piha. The families of these victims, because that's what they are, victims, deserve closure. And I believe a cross-examination of all the cases together could provide just that. Somebody here in Piha knows something of that, I'm sure, he said. It is a sentiment echoed by Roland's parents too, who pleaded with police not to suspend the search for their son and to examine his case next, next to the other missing persons profiles. A statement from the family said, I believe if they did still keep this case open and look at the other similar cases of the people that have gone missing from Piha, we might be able to find something they missed. It's just a shame. It's such a beautiful place. And there's a picture here and it says a teenager's t-shirt was found in Kari Kari Bush in the search for Eloy Rowland. His parents continue, we truly hope he is okay and hope he will come home soon. In a statement addressing the calls for the cases to be reopened, Detective Inspector Aaron Proctor said no two missing person cases were alike. The focus was always on finding answers for the families of the missing people, but unfortunately it was not always possible, he said. He says police deal with over 9,000 cases a year of people being reported missing. 
In the search for Eloy Rowland, for example, he said police carried out an exhaustive land search of the Waitakere Ranges involving more than 600 hours of searching over a two-month period. He said in each other case, once all possible lines of inquiry have been exhausted and no further information is received about the missing person, the matter will be referred to the coroner, who will ultimately make a ruling on the fate of the missing person based on the information that is available. He continues, should any new information be received on any missing person case, we will assess that information and determine whether any further action or inquiry is required. He says to reopen a cro- coronial coronial gosh, can't say that word, coronial inquiry requires a written request to the Solicitor General, a Crown Council spokesperson said. The files are then reviewed, a recommendation is made for the Solicitor General to consider. We're unable to disclose to you whether any of the family members of the missing people in question have made such requests. Despite initially expressing interest, both in the Cam- Kim Bambas and Irena Ashley's families declined to comment as part of the story as they continued to live with the hurt of unanswered questions. Um, that what an amazing effort by these guys um, to to you know go through this and and get all that information and pile it together. It's been a long time coming for someone to do that. So of course I'll leave everything in the description box below a uh, link to so you can go and have a look for yourselves so giving a shout out to Jackson Thomas and Ryan Anderson you did an amazing job please remember if you like it subscribe like hit the notification bell everything really helps me if you have any information about any of the cases that uh, we talked about, Crime Stoppers 0800 555 one anonymously, or well, you can call police on 105 or contact your local police station. And let's go back to where I was. Um, contact New Zealand Mysteries, email nzmissing at gmail.com. We're on Facebook. We have a website, newzealandmissing.wordpress.com. Uh, We're on YouTube and we have a podcast, so look for us. Thank you very much for going through that with me and spending some time with me. It's been um, a great, great effort by these guys to put uh, some of these cases together and look at them. And tell me what you think in the comments below. Do you think that these people were abducted or do you think they just went off into the bush and got lost and you know, I don't know, animals ate their bones or something, (laughs) their flesh, I don't know, whatever you think, put it in uh, the comments below, but just remember to be respectful because families might look into it and um, we don't want to cause them any more grief. Thanks very much.